In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to resize an image inside of Adobe Spark. What's up guys? Thanks for clicking on this video. My name is Nate Hibbert and this is Wingman University where we help you start and scale a print on demand business. In today's video, we're gonna be showing you guys how to resize images. So this is something I do a lot for my print on demand business because I like to create one design and then use it on multiple different products. Uh, and all the platforms kind of have their own resizing needs and the exact measurements that they need, especially Merch by Amazon, that one's very strict. Uh, so knowing how to resize your images kind of on the fly uh, without having to to go in and recreate that design altogether is a very good skill to have. So let's go ahead and jump into some over the shoulder so I can show you exactly how to do that. So if it's your first time ever hearing about Adobe Spark or wanting to find it, we're gonna start here on Google and I'm just gonna type in Spark by Adobe and that's gonna bring us to this webpage and we're looking for Adobe Spark and the exact URL is spark.adobe.com. If you click that, then you'll know you'll be in the right spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this link and that's gonna bring us to their home page. And this shows us a little bit about Spark, exactly what it is. It's for social graphics, web pages, and videos. Now you can see a lot of stuff here is for social media and flyers and portfolios and things like that. Uh, but we are actually using this for our print on demand business. And I'll show you how to do that if we go ahead and sign in. And once you do sign in, that's going to bring you to their homepage or your dashboard, rather. Uh, this is Nate's home because it is my personal dashboard. And so these are some of the things that they expect you to create with this tool. So things like Instagram stories, Instagram posts, Facebook covers, all this great stuff uh, that you can do inside of here. And they also give you some awesome templates to work on. Uh, I really love these templates, actually. They are uh, from Adobe, the creators of a lot of amazing things. And so these templates, they have, I think, yeah, over 20,000 different Spark templates that you can go ahead and check out for some inspiration if that's what you're looking for. Uh, but today, like I said, we're going to be working on some of my print-on-demand designs. I'm going to be showing you my print-on-demand designs uh, and how I rescale them. So we're going to go ahead and click on this one, save the chubby unicorns, and that's going to bring us into Spark Post, which is where we can go ahead and edit uh, a design like this. So here we are with our artboard and our toolbox over here to the right hand side. And I've already created this design. It would look great on a t-shirt, but the purpose of this video and what I'm trying to do today is resize this so it would work on a uh, different size product. So I actually have a notepad that I keep open. Uh, and you can see here that I have the sizing for each one of the products that I would like to uh, put this design on. So for t-shirts, it's 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. Uh, and that's the exact size that we have here. But the next product that I would like to list this on is hoodies. And so that's 4,500 pixels by 4,050 pixels. Uh, and so I'm gonna have to resize this just a little bit. And so what I'm gonna do is over here in my toolbox, there's a resize tab at the very bottom. If I click this, uh, it's gonna have some preset sizes. Again, a lot of stuff for social media, um, but we're gonna be focused on this custom button. So I can actually change this to any size that I want. Uh, and you can actually use different units as well. So if you're creating flyers or something, you can actually do this in inches. But today we're gonna be focusing on pixels. And just to remind myself what it is, it's hoodies, uh, by which are 4,500 by 4,050. And thankfully for this note, I actually do open this up quite a lot because I forget to download um, each individual um, size. So for this first one, before I go ahead and change it and do anything, I want to download this to make sure that I have this ready to go when I'm going to upload. So I want it as a PNG. I'm going to start the download and I want it as a transparent background. So once I type or once I click this button, I'll have this design exactly the right size for t-shirt. So now that it's downloaded, which we can see down here in the left hand corner, we're going to go back to the custom sizing and we're going to change the height value because I know the width value is going to stay the same. So this is 4,050. I'm going to hit done and then you'll see that it actually changes the size of our artboard. So it gave us a little bit more room on the left and right here. Uh, and as much as I love Spark, it is not a 100% perfect tool so it does actually have to resize the graphic or move some of our elements a little bit. Uh, this one's not too bad but what I'm gonna do is just make our little rhino buddy uh, a little bit smaller and put him in the middle there. Um, so that way the sizing is kind of the same. It still says uh, what I wanted to say. It can still be identified easily. It's bold, clean, and simple. It's all those great things. I just had to resize so that it would actually work on hoodies. So here we go again. And before I move on to the next size that I want to make, which is actually pop sockets, uh, I'm going to make sure that I download this once again so I have it. But before I download this one, uh, because I'm going to have a new file, I'm going to actually name this one something else. So I don't just have chubby unicorns one, two, and three. Uh, I want to make sure that I actually name them something so I can identify them easily. So I'm going to name this one, uh, I'll put a dash, and I'll call it hoodie. 
And so that way, when I come over here to the download button, I download it as a PNG and I hit transparent, I'll have that file named Chubby Unicorn's hoodie again, so I can just easily identify it. So there you can see it downloaded once again in the bottom left hand corner here. And so now we can move on to that last sizing, which like I said, was for pop sockets and that's 485 by 485. So I'm gonna go to my custom size again and change this to 485. And I actually have to hit tab twice because of this little middle button um, is it will switch things back and forth. This is the same number now, so it won't do anything, but say our width was 500 and our height was 485 and we just wanted to switch those two values, we can click this middle button and it would switch those two numbers. Uh, but we're gonna keep this as a perfect square, 485 by 485, hit done. And that's gonna change our artboard once again. And you can see the spacing just moved a little bit before our guy was overlapping, um, but now this spacing has changed uh, to fit this new artboard size. So what I wanna do here, because I know this is for pop sockets and I don't actually have all this room because the pop socket is actually a circle, is I'm going to shift click all three of these elements. So I'm holding down shift, I'm gonna click all these and what that allows me to do is resize this entire graphic uh, so it can work for whatever space I want it to be on. And also if I hold down shift and click on these three things, I can move these wherever I want. And again, I know the pop socket, it kind of has a circle around the whole thing. So I wanna make sure that this is close to the center. Uh, and then I can nudge these down so that they're actually touching our unicorn, or sorry, our rhino uh, again. And so I'm gonna shift flick these one last time, move this a little bit back towards the center. Uh, and there we go. Um, so when you are resizing, keep in mind that you might have to fiddle around with the graphic a little bit, uh, but for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. It shouldn't take you too much time to rearrange things, unless maybe you have a ton of elements, um, then things can get a little bit messy. But for the most part, I keep my designs bold, clean, and simple. Uh, keyword on there is simple, uh, so that I don't have too much to rearrange when I'm resizing my graphics. But here we go, we got our uh, our pop socket, sorry, I forgot the name of them. Uh, I got my pop socket design here. I'm gonna download this once again uh, and actually remembering to change my file name. So it says hoodie, you can't see it, but it does. Uh, and I'm gonna change this to pop socket. So that way when I download this file, it will not say hoodie two, it will actually say pop socket, uh, which is what I want. So we're gonna download this again, PNG, transparent background, but actually for pop sockets, we want a solid color background. Uh, so this is exactly how it will look. If I do a transparent background, then it will be on white, uh, which is not what I want. So I want the seller, solid color PNG uh, for pop sockets. So I'm gonna click that and then we'll have all the files that we need for t-shirts, hoodies, and pop sockets. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if you guys are trying to resize for a specific platform, a specific product, I definitely suggest you do what I did beforehand and just go and get those sizes. Uh, so you're not like fiddling around trying to find the exact size, like go get all the sizes you need and then go into Spark and just resize it and download it each time uh, a bunch of times. That way you can post that design wherever you would like. Uh, so I hope that was helpful. If you'd like to see more tips and tricks about Spark specifically, you can click this playlist up here. And if you'd like to see how I use this to create designs like this one that you saw in the video, uh, you can click on this video down here and that will bring you to that. And if you'd like to see what we have going on new in this channel and the upcoming episodes, you can click down here to the subscribe button. But until the next video, I will see you guys around.